Hey everybody, I am Jared Clark with Air Guns of Arizona. We're gonna be taking a break from our normal rifle reviews to look at the compressor that fills the tank, that fills the rifles you use. So stick around, we're gonna go over this one from head to toe, we're gonna to talk about some fill times, and I'm gonna tell you why this is a great addition for any pre-charged gun shooter. So you just purchased your brand new Daystate Air Rifle, your Omega Tank, and you've realized that the dive shop is five hours down the road. What are you gonna do? Your solution is right here. The Daystate 4500 PSI high pressure compressor. You can fill the tank, you can fill the gun, and you will never be out of fun with your pre-charged gun. This unit is built like a tank. It'll last for years and years to come, and the warranty that stands behind it, factory trained here in the US. So longevity is, key with this unit. It is built very well. It's gonna give you all the air you could possibly ask for. And we're gonna take a look at all the features and things that make this unit unique. All right, so this unit weighs about 80 pounds, which I understand is not incredibly portable, but with the nice handles you have here, get a buddy and it can be moved very effortlessly. The footprint on it is not too large. It'll sit in most workbenches. It can be put in the back of a truck. It is a very versatile unit. And things like this are just key to having a good, fun, enjoyable, pre-charged experience. If you don't have the ability to refill your tanks, it's kind of like having a car with no gasoline. It's, it's only gonna get you so far. Two additional things you get with the compressor are going to be the instruction manual. This is a great reference. It covers a lot of the things that I talk about in this video today. So skim that through before starting it up. And then you get a quart of the CE750 synthetic oil. We do have plenty of spares of these. Um, but you would need to contact your dealer that you purchased the compressor from to get this particular synthetic oil. So you've just taken delivery on your Daystate compressor. You pull it out of the box. You're gonna realize that it has this big tag on it that says no oil in unit. We do not ship these compressors with oil in them. So the first thing you have to do is put oil in it. So I'm gonna show you real quickly how that is done. It's not intimidating and it's all pretty much done right here. This big red cap that says oil on it. You just wanna go ahead, that has an O-ring that seats it. So pull up on that and it's gonna have your dipstick connected to the end of that. So we got that open. The only other thing we have to open when we're putting oil into the unit is the vent screw right next to it. This is a 14 millimeter nut and just simply break that loose and take it off while oil is going in. So that's just a cap like that. That's off, pull our oil plug out. And then a funnel is definitely gonna be another necessary tool here. You don't want oil getting spilled all over your unit. It'll make a mess. So get yourself a nice funnel. As per manufacturer spec, we put three tenths of a liter in here. So that's 300 milliliters. So I'm gonna do about a quarter. Um, halfway point here, we'll do right at a quarter and see where we look. So go ahead and hold on to your funnel. So you can see here, kind of have some markers. I'm right at the third. So that's a, it's a good enough spot to go ahead and check it. All right, and you just want to clean your dipstick just like on your car. Bottom it out. And pull it up. All right, my, my oil line, you can see it registering right below this line. So that tells me there's not quite enough here. I want to be right between these two little uh, marks right here on my dipstick. So I'm going to add a little bit more oil. All right, so. As you can see on my indicator here, I, I'm not a little over quarter, not quite full halfway. So let's go ahead and check the level again. I'm in between the two dots there. Um, and if we look at our liter of oil here, you can see that one, two, three, it's about right at three lines, three tenths of a liter. It's a good indicator for you. Now we know we have enough oil in the system. We can go ahead, plug that back up. And you always want to remember to put your vent plug back on. I just kind of do it by hand and then give it half a turn with a 14 millimeter. Quarter turn with a 14 millimeter. So that's nice and snug. So there it is, we have oil in the unit. It's all ready to start running. So let's get behind the counter and we'll show you some more features on this. So these units are 110 volt. They are just your standard plug it into your wall at your house socket and it's pretty much ready to run right out of the box. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna to touch on some of the features this unit has, and then we're gonna do some real-time fills for you. We're gonna calculate some numbers, and I'm gonna give you 
some stats on how quickly this unit turns. Um, so just looking at this guy right here, I'm gonna start up at the top. You have a, light, a nice large, it's about two and a half inches, but this is a glycerin filled gauge. The unit does vibrate a little bit while it runs, so the extra fluid will keep your needle still and give you nice accurate readings. Right off the neck of the gauge here, this little black box with the wire running to it, this is the auto shut off. So this unit does have an auto shut off. It will be set to right at 4,500 PSI. So when you're running your compressor, you don't have to worry about going above 4,500 because this unit will send an electrical relay and automatically shut off your unit for you. So that's a really nice feature to have anytime you're going up four or 5,000 PSI, it's a great fail save. Below that is your condensation trap. So this is a moisture trap. It doesn't have any cartridge or filter that needs to be put directly in here, but this will actually, as it's running, need to be drained about every 10 to 15 minutes, depending on where you're at and where the moisture levels are. But this is your water separator. So as the unit runs, you just wanna keep in mind that every 10, 15 minutes, that needs to be open for about a second, let all the water out, seal it back up and keep building pressure. Off the other side of this condensation trap right here, these are the safety blow off valves. So in addition to your automatic shutoff, it has what I would call a tea kettle valve, meaning all the ones we get are set at 330 bar. So if for some reason your auto shutoff doesn't kick in, as soon as you get to 330 bar, which is about 4,700 PSI, this little blow off valve will release enough pressure to bring you down below it. And then as you build, every time it hits that 330 bar, it'll just vent the pressure so you can never build more than 4,700 or cause any damage to your unit. So the unit does have the auto, auto shut off and then it also has the blow off valve, both as safety fail safes for you, the end user. Just to the left of your blow off, this is your intake. So as the unit runs, this is where it's gonna pull air from. You do have an air filter in here. The intake filter is supposed to be checked every 25 run hours and replaced every 100 run hours or annually, whichever one comes first. And then the last thing you'll see that's attached to your uh, water separator here is the output line. This sits at the top, the water moisture sits at the bottom. So you can do the uh, gravity will come into play and not allow any moisture to get through into your fill line. But the fill line here is just over three feet and it does come with a standard DIN 300 fitting. So we'll talk about connectors too when we run it, but this is a very standard in the world of scuba tanks, dive shops, that is a very standard connection fitting. So the water separator itself has a down stem that sticks up here, and that's to avoid any moisture. So if there was moisture, it would fall to the bottom before you expelled it, but just in case it didn't, it has a down stem that sticks up here and sucks air away from the very bottom. So there's no way actually to put a filter cartridge in here, and for those of you who I know when you think about high pressure, you think about moisture separation and making sure it's as dry of air as possible. So we do offer the Omega clean air filter. This would sit in line to your unit. It does have a carbon style filter, sits in here. It would sit in line. It would be the last thing your air goes through before it goes output into your gun here or your tank, whatever you're filling. But this would ensure that you get the driest air possible. In my opinion, if you're going with a unit like this and you're filling some of the expensive toys that are associated with it, it's a small drop in the bucket for longevity and enjoyment down the road. So highly recommend these. They work great with the unit. So it can be added with a quick, simple connection fitting right here that goes onto your DIN fitting, leaves you with a quick connect, and then you would just plug it directly into your moisture separator. And now you have an inline as dry of air as possible setup. So it's an accessory that you can add on. In a place like Arizona, the moisture separator would probably be more than enough. If you're up in a much more humid climate near an ocean or something like that, this would be the way to go. You don't want any moisture in your system and that's how you would ensure it. So the cartridge that sits in here, it doesn't matter which way it goes in when you replace it. The big thing is on the carbon side of the filter, you want that to be on your output line. So the one that's going out to your gun, to your tank, whatever you're filling, you want the carbon to face the output side. And the only other thing on the filter is it needs to be checked roughly every 30 to 50 run hours, and it has a moisture indicating strip here. So I went ahead and saturated this one in some moisture so you can see it's normally blue. Once it gets moisture in it, that starts to fade. So once your entire strip is white and no longer blue, that's when you know that it's time to change this cartridge. The manufacturer recommends every 50 run hours, even if the strip hasn't changed, to go ahead and swap that out. So next to the blow off valve here, you'll see that you do have where the oil is applied. This is just set in place with an O-ring and it has a big red cap on it that says oil. So this is where you dump the oil in and right next to it, you have your vent plug. So anytime you add oil, you just wanna go ahead and grab a 14 millimeter and pop that off. It will allow the oil to run in quicker, smoother, 
and then the cap just goes back on once you're done. And then all of that sits right on top of a three-stage compressing unit. So this thing, like we talked about, is 110 volt. It is a three-stage pump in here, and it is built very well. You can see just from looking at it, it has a nice sleek design, um, but the pumping unit itself is, is Italian made. It's made very well. And especially with the 110 motor, you have a compressing unit that's big enough for a 220, but it's turning at a 110 speed. So you have almost an overbuilt unit for how much power it's giving you, which in the long run is a benefit to you because everything will just last longer. It'll be able to hold up to more scrutiny. It's just gonna be really well built. There's not gonna have any problems with this compressing unit turning at the 110 speed. Great unit. Build quality, as you can see, visual appeal. Everything about this unit is very sleek and stylish. On the front of the motor here, you will see this big red button. On the bottom of this button, there is a there is a hinge, so I pull up on that. Now you've exposed the green and the red. This is the start, this is the stop. This is a fail safe in case you just need to, as soon as you latch that, it'll stop it. So if there's ever a moment that you need to shut it off immediately, give it a good shut like that, it'll latch, it'll stay off, and it won't turn back on. So your electrical box sits on top of the motor down here. This is a belt-driven unit. Um, when you turn the motor on, it's gonna spin the fan. The fan then pushes air over the unit to keep it cool while it runs. And when you're talking about running for as long as these need to fill up a scuba tank, all the airflow, all the oil coolant you can get is great. So I've enlisted the help of an Omega 75 cubic foot tank. We connected it via the DIN fitting right here on the valve. And as this one can see, it just has just under about 3000 PSI in it. So this is as simple as it is. The, the one DIN screws in, the tank pressurizes the line itself. You can make sure your bleeder trap is closed. And I'm just gonna fire this thing up and we're gonna fill this tank. So green button on. Now you wait. All right, so there we just saw the auto shutoff kick in. I'm just above 4,500, right at about 4,600. And as you'll notice, some of this smoke is coming out. This is just the oil. It gets really hot when it's running. So every time you stop it, you're gonna have some of this steam come out, some of the smoke filters out of your uh, intake. Completely normal. Don't let it alarm you. Uh, but as you just saw, the unit itself will not go past 4,500. It's very safe. It's very easy to maintain. So now that everything's done, all you would do would be to bleed the valve. So now there's no residual pressure left in our line here. Tank is full. The compressor's still a little hot, but it did the job great. This unit will fill tanks whenever you need it to. It's great for at home use, using it with a couple buddies, anything like that. When filling the 75 cubic foot tank from empty, the entire process takes about an hour and 40 minutes on the nose. From zero to 1,000 PSI was right at 12 minutes. From 1,000 to 2,000 was just shy of 30 minutes. 2,000 to 3,000 took just shy of an hour at 56 minutes. And then from 3,000 to 4,000, you're at an hour and a half, and then 10 more minutes to top it off from 4,000 4, to 4,500. So the unit itself is very efficient, and you can expect top ops to be in the 30 to 45 minute range. So the compressor can be used to fill tanks like we've talked about, or with the right adapters, you can fill the guns themselves. So here we have the DIN to QC. We got it connected to a Red Wolf right here. It's right at 200 bar. But what I would recommend is you stay here with your gun because it will fill a lot quicker and you want to make sure that you bleed it every couple of minutes to avoid any moisture. So everything's set up. Watch this as it runs. So keep in mind the auto shutoff is at 4,500. I don't really want to fill this gun to 4,500. I just want to go to 250 bar. So I'm going to stay right here and watch this one a little bit closer because I'm not I'm not filling to where the shutoff goes. I'm filling to where the gun wants to go. This is just to show you that you can use the compressor connected directly to a gun in a couple of minutes to, to fill a gun direct. The owner's manual and the manufacturer recommend that after the first five run hours, you wanna go ahead and change the oil. And then after that, it's every 50 run hours or annually, whichever one comes first. Since you will be doing it relatively soon after purchase, I'm just gonna show you real quick how that process is done. So we have the unit here facing us. Um, it's the opposite side of the motor and all you're gonna need to drain the unit is a 17 millimeter socket. So if you look right in here, you got that 17 millimeter head right here. That's where all the oil is gonna drain out. It doesn't hurt to have a couple handy towels ready cause it's not exactly downward that it falls. So I'm gonna wedge those in there. And you do have a gasket in there. So remove it very slowly or else you'll be swimming through your uh, oil to find your gasket that fell out. 
So I'm gonna get it to about there, hopefully, and get the rest by hand, yep. All right, so get my blue towel ready. So I kept a bucket really close here to prevent splatter or any kind of mess. But now we just wait. It does kind of pool up here, but that's all right. We can wipe that down when it's done. You want to let it drip out. As you noticed as that was coming out, it is kind of dirty. This is the first oil change I've done on this one. So manufacturing process, first time it goes through, you will get some probably dark oil. But after that, it should become more clear and transparent, more what it looks like when it goes in. So. After the first five run hours, this is when you're gonna to wanna to do it. Expect to see something like that. And then you top it off with the uh, three tenths of a quart like we talked about in the intro of the video. The manufacturer also recommends checking the oil every five run hours, just to make sure that nothing is leaked out and that your oil levels remain good. The belt wear is supposed to be checked at 25 hours, replaced at 500 hours, or it does recommend replacing it annually just to be safe. So this little unit is Italian made. And like we kind of touched on a couple of times, it's a good looking unit. It, it would sit on a workbench nicely. It would really tie together a work area without being too intrusive. So Italian made, built to very high spec. You can see that in the fit, finish and quality. And then the warranty. Here in the United States, these day state warranties do have a fully fledged technical staff that is factory trained. So there are no worries when it comes to longevity of use. Daystate will be able to warranty and service this compressor here in the United States for years to come. All right, so there you have it. The Daystate 110 volt compressor. We showed you that it can fill tanks. We talked about the top off times and you just got to listen to this little baby hum for a little bit. So quality build, it would be great for any pre-charged gun user that is in need of air. Not enough good things to say about this unit, but that's gonna do it for this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, please subscribe to YouTube to stay up to date with more videos like it. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, join our email list. There's plenty of ways to stay in touch with us. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you next time.